Tash Dile and welcome to In Conversation with Tibet TV. This is Sakina Bhatt. For today's conversation, we have the wonderful presence of a Tibetan filmmaker and the co-founder of Dharamshala International Film Festival. He is Tenzing Sonam and today we will be discussing about the most popular festival, Dharamshala International Film Festival. Welcome to the show, Tenzing Sonamla. It's really nice to have you here finally. Thank you for inviting me. So, Tenzi Sonamla, besides um, the presence of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the famous cricket stadium in Dharamshala, another important aspect of uh, visiting Dharamshala is now attending the Dharamshala International Film Festival. So, you and your wife came up with this idea and um, started the festival in the year 2012. So, tell us why did you think that it was so important to uh, hold such festival that too in a place like Dharamshala? My wife Ritu and me, we uh, moved to Dharamshala in 1996 and uh, made this town our home. You know, we are both filmmakers as you mentioned and we've been to many film festivals around the world. So, uh, while living in Dharamshala, one of the things we noticed was uh, there wasn't any kind of contemporary cultural event uh, uh, like a film festival or even like you know contemporary art or literature at that time and because we've been to so many film festivals we kind of thought wouldn't it be interesting to start a small festival here where we could bring uh, interesting alternative uh, independent films to Dharamsala you know give the local communities uh, an opportunity to kind of uh, be exposed to such cinema so I think the initial impulse was really really to target uh, our local community to create an event where you know Tibetans, Indians, um, foreigners who come here, visitors could interact in a kind of a cultural space uh, where everyone loves movies. So you know where people come to watch movies, and I think that was the initial idea. Now that uh, people from all over the world are coming to Dharamshala to watch this festival in particular, and now this festival has become one of the most popular film festivals. So were you expecting such positive response when you first started the festival? No, not at all. I mean, as I said, uh, our initial idea was really to target our local community, to create something for this community. I guess what happened, uh, the festival started in 2012. As the festival uh, kind of uh, proceeded, it uh, filled a certain niche in the Indian kind of film festival landscape because really in India there aren't that many independent uh, film festivals. Uh, there are the big festivals or there are some very tiny festivals. Somehow Dharamsala International Film Festival filled that kind of vacuum, you know, and uh, people from all over the country started responding. Filmmakers, uh, especially Indian independent filmmakers, wanted to come to Dharamsala to show their films. Audiences started coming from around the world. And every year, uh, you know, it just became kind of bigger and bigger. And that really took us by surprise. Uh, I don't think we ever expected that. But in a sense, uh, it's actually really nice that, uh, you know, one was able to create an event like this that has such a wide uh, kind of a reach. So um, I have noticed that every year you call uh, the most, um, you know, like uh, known and veteran actors. Uh, you had uh, Konkonasen, you had um, Nasiruddin, you had Manoj Bajpai, and this year you even had Adil Hussain. So, and most of these actors, they have like wonderful things to say about Div. I even heard Adil say that uh, this is the film festival where they don't have red carpets, and this is the place where they can actually make contacts. Mm -hmm. So. What is the purpose of bringing such veteran actors to such festivals? Actually, we don't, uh, you know, we don't invite uh, actors uh, because they're famous or because uh, they're well known. Mm -hmm. uh, we only invite them if they are actually connected to a film that uh, we have chosen to show in the film, in the, in the festival. Mm -hmm. Manoj Bajpai came with, uh, you know, a film that he had acted in, which we had uh, selected. Konkona Sen uh, had actually directed her own film, which uh, was selected for the festival, so she came to present that film. Adil Hussain has been to the festival maybe, uh, I think this year was his third time and the previous two times uh, he was uh, in films, uh, acting in films, so he came as part of a film. This year actually for the first time he came as a supporter of DIFF and he wanted to, you know, just support us, so we were, you know, very happy with that and he did uh, his acting uh, master class while he was here. We don't have a policy to invite particular actors. Even Nasiruddin Shah came here because uh, a film of his was showing uh, at the festival. But uh, once they're here, I think what they uh, respond to is the fact that unlike many other festivals, there's no, uh, no glitz and glamour and red carpet and a film market. And this is a place where people are just here to watch films, to enjoy cinema, to meet each other and talk. And I think that's what they really like about uh, DIFF. Yeah, speaking about the masterclass by Adil, like, unlike 
other film festivals and unlike the previous uh, diff festivals you had this master class by adil and not just that you even had master classes when uh, like you collaborated with envision and the classes were film making classes were free yeah. and uh, on that we had um, you were even giving out free diff tickets so we can really see that this festival is actually pushing the aspiring tibetan filmmakers mm -hmm. so can you tell us a little bit about that yeah one of the things we realize is uh, you know most people are used to watching commercial uh, cinema right so it's either bollywood or hollywood or tv serials but uh, very rarely do people like especially in places like dharamsala have an opportunity to watch a uh, kind of alternative uh, non commercial uh, cinema which you know is actually very important and what we realized is uh, in order to nurture a kind of a cinema literate culture you need to actually start with younger people you need to show them films you need to actually talk to them explain to them why these films are important so that's something that from the beginning we uh, had in mind and over the years we've had uh, a program called uh, the diff film fellows where we invited uh, we selected uh, five uh, budding filmmakers from the himalayan regions of india to come to diff for mentorship to watch films so that's been an ongoing kind of a uh, aim of diff to kind of uh, promote and develop this sort of film culture we've been having master classes almost every year uh, we've had you know directors come uh, we've had like uh, asif kapadia who's you know famous uh, director of uh, um, you know senna and uh, now maradona he came here in the first year and did a uh, master class on making documentaries and feature films so we've been doing that uh, every year but uh, i think what's happened is um, it's become more visible now yeah. and uh, adil's uh, talk this year i think uh, had over 100 people attend so that's 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 an important mission of diff uh, regarding tibetan uh, younger tibetan filmmakers um, you know i mean diff is not uh, specifically uh, you know a tibetan uh, festival that was something we were quite clear with in the beginning it was an international film festival but it's happening in dharamsala Dharamsala is the seat of the Tibetan government in exile his holiness lives here so whoever comes to diff uh, will obviously be exposed to the Tibetan situation and me being Tibetan and a filmmaker I can't ignore the fact that there are many young Tibetans who want to make films so part of uh, this year's collaboration with Envision was to design a kind of a program specifically for young Tibetans who are interested in uh, filmmaking to bring them to diff to expose them to different types of films and to talk about it to have master classes so this is the first year we've done that but hopefully it's something we'll continue in the future speaking about uh, the tibetan filmmakers uh, this year when i attended diff i have noticed that there were hardly many tibetan films that were being screened there were only two one was pema and the other was light the candle so there are many aspiring tibetan filmmakers who are actually making really good films these days so what do you think that uh, they need to focus more on and what do you think that they are lacking in so this is a kind of a you know a, a, a complex uh, difficult uh, kind of problem for me uh, because i would like to see more tibetan films uh, you know showing at diff but uh, you know one diff is a very small festival uh, all the films are very carefully hand picked uh, the short films we have a separate uh, you know group of people who select the short films who uh, program it so in that sense ritu and i don't have anything to do with the short film uh, selection so the fact that two tibetan films were selected this year is actually really good because this year's short film program was excellent we had films from all over the world and all over india so you know two tibetan films were selected so i think that's a good sign yeah. firstly we don't have many you know professional tibetan filmmakers uh, making films I think the biggest problem we face right now with the young Tibetan filmmakers is uh, their films are not of a standard that uh, can compete at an international level. I think that's something we need to really work on and it's not their fault because I think uh, they don't have the training, they don't have the opportunities, they don't have the background, you know. And uh, so one of the things that I feel is really important and maybe it's something that uh, you know we as a Tibetan community could uh, support is to uh, have programs where we send young potential tibetan filmmakers to film schools like you know to pune to the ftii in pune or to the sachinjit ray film school in calcutta like proper film schools where they can really get proper training develop their skills and then i think we'll see uh, the progress that that mm -hmm. quality you know that standard uh, improve but right now i think that's our biggest problem is that we're still struggling to find that uh, that standard you know 
Okay, tell us uh, how do you select your flints and on what basis? So uh, we don't have any specific criteria for uh, what kind of films we select. Uh, the main thing is it has, should be independent, which means it cannot be like a commercial, a big commercial film. Uh, it should uh, have something that's very unique uh, to talk about in its subject matter. It should reflect uh, a, the, uh, the, a filmmaker as an artist, uh, so something of the filmmaker's vision should come through in the film. So it's very broad. Uh, we don't, and we do documentaries, we do uh, fiction, you know, feature films, we do shorts. We do children's films, so it's a very broad kind of uh, range of films that we select. The process is, you know, uh, Ritu and me, along with uh, a group of uh, very close kind of uh, people who are, they're all in the film kind of world. They're festival programmers, they're uh, film critics. Uh, right from the beginning of the year, we start uh, looking out for films that are being talked about internationally, that sound interesting to us. We ask people we know to send us recommendations. And then we build a long list of films that we think are interesting for DIFF. And then we start watching these films. Uh, so a whole group of us, we start watching them. And then we kind of narrow the selection down. And uh, then eventually, I mean, we show about 26 full-length feature films. So out of hundreds of films, we you know whittle it down to about 26 uh, feature films. This year, for the first time, we opened uh, submissions uh, uh, because before this year, we didn't have a submission process. It was completely curated because so many people started sending us films. Even though we said DIFF doesn't accept submissions, they still sent us films. And we thought, okay, you know, if people are that interested, then we should make a system for them to be able to submit their films. So we opened it up for submissions and we had over 350 submissions this year. So then we had a team that looked through all these films, that did the first round, the second round, you know, kind of made a shorter, shorter list. It was quite a long process, but... Uh, 350 films is quite a lot, yeah. and you have to watch them all. Well, uh, uh, groups maybe. we have yeah. groups that, that watch them. So at the end, Ritu and I watch pretty much everything that comes to the short list, yeah. yeah. So uh, how long does it take for you to prepare and come to the final? So the process of selecting films really starts as soon as one edition of Diff finishes because we then already we are looking for films uh, that are you know that sound interesting, but the actual work I would say probably takes about two to three months uh, before the festival starts. So you said that it started with a small festival and now it is one of the most known film festivals. Tell us like what do you see and what kind of response are you getting now? And when you first started the festival, like how many people were there and how many films were screened? So, uh, yeah, when we first started the festival, we had to call on a lot of favors. You know, we reached out to uh, friends of ours, like filmmakers who were friends, and asked them, can you show your film at DIFF? Can you come to DIFF? So even in the very first year, we had, you know, Hansal Mehta, we had uh, Umesh Kulkarni, who's a famous Marathi filmmaker. We had Asif Kapadia, you know. So, but these were people we knew personally, and they came because they wanted to help, and they also were interested. Oh, a film festival in Dharamsala sounds interesting. So that's how uh, you know initially uh, we kind of built the, I guess, the festival brand, if you wanted, that this is a festival where independent filmmakers like to come. But uh, now the response is just the, the audience response is so good. You know, people really like, uh, you know, they seem to really appreciate the festival and filmmakers all love the festival. So in terms of uh, the audience, it's fantastic. But our biggest problem, uh, and this has been a problem right from the beginning, is funding. So that's where actually uh, Ritu, who actually does most of the hands-on kind of, uh, you know, the administration aspect of the festival as well, she has a really hard time because she has to look for money every year. So already this year now we're starting to look for money. And somehow, even though the festival is doing well, it's got great media kind of uh, response, but getting funding is <laughs> really difficult. And I think that's something, uh, you know, that's going to determine how the festival that moves in the That is one the of future. the challenges that you that's always That's one of the face. biggest challenges, yeah. yeah. And also speaking about the audience, this year what I noticed is that there were like a lot of youngsters mm -hmm. and all of them were very participative, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like when they had to ask questions also, there were so many and then like you had to say like, no, now this is going to be the last question. Right. So in terms of audiences, like what do you have to say? Because like initially, was it like that? Like there were many youngsters? Yeah, or okay, like many so yes. Uh, so initially in the first couple of years, most of our audiences were more local uh, people. Like, So we used to have uh, a lot of like the tourists, uh, foreign tourists, uh, expats, you know, foreigners who live in Dharamsala. 
Somehow Tibetans, uh, you know, uh, it's been a challenge to get Tibetans to come to the festival. But every year we've been getting better and better response. And I think this year we had a really good uh, number of Tibetans who came to the festival and uh, some local Indians. So in initially it was very uh, localized. Each year we started seeing that more and more people were coming from outside, you know, from places as far away as Kerala and Bangalore. And that was kind of surprising that people were combining a holiday in the mountains with the festival. And that, I think, has really grown now, you know. So the audience mix has changed. You're right, most of our audience is uh, young people. They're uh, usually educated young people who are really passionate about cinema. And that's why you see even in the q and A's in the during the film screenings, they are, you know, they ask really intelligent questions. Exactly. They followed the film. A lot of curiosity. A lot of curiosity. And I think that's what gives the festival its energy as well, because it's a youthful festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and what what was so exciting was that some of the filmmakers they were even like uh, telling us that if you ask questions, then you will get a free T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was like very interesting. Right. Okay, thanks, Sonamla. Finally, mm, how can you convince the younger generation about how through filmmaking one can contribute towards the Tibetan cause? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. I think film is such an important medium in today's world. Uh, you know, people have pretty much stopped reading. Uh, everyone's like watching, uh, you know, watching videos. Uh, that's that's the main medium of uh, communication now. And cinema is such a powerful tool to convey, you know, um, to convey anything, you know, human emotions, to convey political realities. And I think in the Tibetan world, uh, because uh, films or art in general is not valued very highly, uh, you know, for many reasons, we didn't have a kind of a film tradition or a literature tradition, well, contemporary uh, literary tradition. So we've kind of neglected uh, these aspects of uh, our culture. And uh, I think it's really important for our community to recognize that uh, films are an important way to push our, uh, you know, the Tibetan cause forward in the world and that we need to encourage uh, younger Tibetans to take up filmmaking uh, seriously as, you know, as careers, as uh, vocations, you know, we need to really uh, do our best to support them. Because in the future, I think uh, that's, that's the way we're going to have to fight our battles, uh, you know, through film. Through films. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tenzing Sonamla, for your wonderful words and sharing Not with us all. more about Dharamshala International Film Festival. Not at all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sakina Zaha. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.